watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto, Ontario. I'm Catherine Bullock. Assalamu alaikum and greetings of peace. Today, a conversation with Sheikh Suleiman about how he's helping found an Islamic credit union in Ontario. But first, some news headlines. Hundreds entered Canada with suspected falsified COVID and vaccination documents. U of T Student Union apologizes over kosher food policy. Launch Good raises $1 million for Muslim charities on Giving Tuesday. Michigan high school shooter charged with terrorism murder. Barbados becomes a republic after 55 years of independence. And now the details. The Canada Border Services Agency, or CBSA, has encountered hundreds of suspected fake COVID-19 test results and vaccination records from travellers coming into Canada. Since October 31, border officials have come across 374 suspected falsified COVID-19 test results and 92 suspected forged proof of vaccination documents. Canadians using falsified documents will be allowed entry but can face fines from the Public Health Agency of Canada. Non-Canadians could be denied entry. Health policy expert Lorian Hardcastle, speaking to CBC News, says that vaccination records are essential, especially with new variants emerging across the globe. The University of Toronto's Scarborough Student Union issued an apology after a backlash regarding a motion passed to strengthen their role in the BDS movement. The Boycott, Divestments and Economic Sanctions movement, otherwise known as BDS, is intended to pressure Israel to observe international law. The motion would, dis would disengage from events, services or groups including companies providing kosher food that do not normalize Israeli apartheid. Critics called the past motion anti-Semitic. After the backlash, the student union issued an apology and said that they would amend the policy so that students could have access to kosher foods. Chris Blovelt, the founder and CEO of LaunchGood, announced that over $1 million was raised for charities on their website on Giving Tuesday this week. LaunchGood also gave away $100,000 in prize money for select causes. In first place came the Provide Warmth and Build Lasting Change program for Syria, Lebanon and Turkey, held by Con Human Concern International. They received $20,000 for their campaign to provide winter kits and food for refugees. Last year, the highest donation made in a single day on LaunchGood totaled $755,000. LaunchGood, founded in 2013, is a, is a Muslim-run crowdfunding platform that serves the community worldwide. A high school boy was charged as an adult with terrorism and four counts of murder after he killed four people and injured seven others when he opened fire in a Michigan school this week. Those killed included a 14, 16 and two 17-year-olds. Though the police have not offered a motive, video evidence found on the shooter's phone shows that the incident was planned. Prosecutors are also considering charging the shooter's parents who bought the gun a few days before the incident. According to Education Week's tracker, this was the seventh school shooting in the United States for 2021. Barbados is the world's newest republic after it removed Queen Elizabeth as the head of state. It became independent from Britain 55 years ago in 1966. A Barbadian, Sandra Mason, will serve as the head of state. Several dignitaries attended the celebration, including Prince Charles from the United Kingdom. Since independence, the country has slowly distanced itself from reminders of slavery and oppression. The process of becoming a republic has taken 20 years. And that's it for the news. And now our conversation with Sheikh Suleiman about how he's helping found an Islamic credit union in Ontario. Welcome to the show, Sheikh Suleiman. Assalamu alaikum. 
Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sister Cathy, and thank you for welcoming me. It's a pleasure. It's our pleasure. You're trailblazing a very important institution for the Muslim community, Ontario, which is an Islamic credit union. Uh, there will be some of us, including myself, who are not really sure what a credit union is. So can we just spend a couple of seconds on a credit union 101? A credit union is simply a financial institution at the community level. It will be owned by members of the community and then it will be serving the community. So unlike the bank where we are all customers, the credit union, we're going to own it ourselves. And is there anything different between a credit union and an Islamic credit union? Well, ordinary credit union is, we call it conventional. They operate on interest. As you know, credit is to offer a loan to members and then they will charge interest. But Islamic credit union is strictly non-interest based. So I'm guessing that would be the reason my next question is, why do we need an Islamic credit union? Uh, and I'm guessing it has to do with interest. But are there other reasons? Well, a lot of other communities own their own credit union and we need to own our own so we can um, dictate our own economic well-being and our own financial, uh, uh, financial obligations. Can you explain how that actually works? You said that it's different from a bank because the community members own the credit union. Walk us through what that means. It means everybody will buy a share, a portion of the ownership. So let us say that if we have 5,000 members and we ask everybody to pay $1,000 for $5 million, everybody has an equal ownership in the credit union, the base ownership. Yes, there will be more investments. People will come, might invest $5,000 more than the 1,000 or 10,000 more, and then they will get additional benefits like dividends and part of the profit. But the base ownership is uh, for everybody that contributed the initial $1,000. And they have equal votes too for when we come to the general meetings. So that means I'm guessing that there are two different kinds of stakeholders, the investors and then the customers who open accounts with the credit union? I hear you mention customers, we are owners. Everybody that contributes the initial capital is an owner. I see. So right. you can't open an account without becoming an owner. Is that what you mean? Yes, you have to have an account. You have to be a member to have an account. I see. And then there's a, 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 the benefit of the dividends as well as having the account. Yes, exactly. So the residual profits after we've, if, if there's the same member, invest $10,000 beyond the 1,000, he or she gets prior dividends. And then the residual dividends is equally shared among everybody that contributed the 1,000. So yes, there is additional benefit or we call it residual benefit. And they own the credit union. So they make the decisions, for example, hiring the board members and what direction the credit union takes, yes. Now, I understand that this is a project that you've been working on for quite a while. Tell us some of the backstory. What have you done till now and where are we at? We started working voluntarily. So it took us this long because, first of all, there is no credit union existing within the Muslim community. So it's, a, it's, it's an uncharted territory. And for us to come from scratch and develop a business case um, and an application that meets the requirements of the regulators. It's not an easy task. You need professionals, not only professionals, but those with the background that suits this project. We don't have a lot of them. So the few that we have had to work day and night and voluntarily as well. And that is why it took us this long. But Alhamdulillah, we've submitted an application and we got a response back after a year or so from the regulators to fix certain things and we have done the revision we've done it completed it and we have resubmitted it so now we're waiting for their response uh, and uh, at the same time we are going through the community to ask for more support by signing the service and that's what that's what i was going to ask you how is the community you, you mentioned there haven't been very there haven't been very many people with expertise to help bring it to this stage. But when you plan to open it out to get the owners, how are people reacting? 
Yeah, so far people have been surprised. There's a lot of people that thought we will never get our own credit union. It will be rejected at first uh, submission, but that was that not the case. Right. Yeah. We've submitted it, and we actually met with the Minister of Finance, then Charles Souza, who, is in, who was in support of it. And we met the regulators who told us, yes, if we can fulfill all the requirements, inshallah, we will also get our own. Because now I have to go back and mention that the last couple, two, three credit unions that were conventional, that were approved, it took them seven, eight, nine years. So it is not a unique thing to us alone. Even though we don't have the experience, we don't deal with interest, but it took us as long as it took the other conventional credit unions. So we are, we are um, I think we are doing well as com comparably. And then the community now, surprisingly, they are responding because, for example, we have over 2,000 signups in the service and there are credit unions who've been existing for 65 years, they don't even have a thousand members. So you can imagine how far we're going to go. So that's a positive response within the community. And the, the, for the revision that we started, we did it with throughout the COVID time. So we revised the survey throughout the COVID time and we still got 2000 members. If we had to gone physically to every, some of the centers, the bigger centers, we believe we would have been probably 5,000, maybe even 10,000 members by now. So that's a point. That's very encouraging. You haven't had to make the pitch then. There might be skeptical people who say, well, if I'm going to invest, I better invest in real estate or stock market. My returns will be better than in a credit union. Have you had those sort of skeptical people that you've, that you've had to win over? Well, what you don't see is that people don't see, I guess, is if you invest in stocks and, 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 and shares, and you get your, your income, your, your profit over your, there's risks anyway. But when you get your, your, your return, you don't own that corporation. But when you invest in the credit union, you also own the credit union. So that's a big advantage you get. Plus we're going to give scholarships to students to study. So there are intangible benefits that people, well, I call it intangible, but they're actually more tangible. I mean, Jannah is intangible, but that, that is, what you are, your whole life is working for. So you, 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 the, the parents that can't pay school fees for their kids, but we know that Islamic education is vital, is the, the, the life of every Muslim. So you now have an institution that not only do you own it, but it also helps you pay, give scholarships to your, to, your, to your children. So it's much more than the investment. Plus we're right. going to compete right. in the open market. We are going to be competitive with the banks and the, the stocks uh, uh, brokers that actually pay you that returns. We might even do better than them. Inshallah, you will do better than them. I'm, I'm afraid we have to leave it there, but thank you for coming on and telling telling us about this trailblazing pioneer project. Alhamdulillah, praises to Allah, and we thank you for having us, inshallah, and we hope to be to see more of you, inshallah, as we progress. Thank you very much. Jazakallah. Salaam alaikum. You've been watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Stay tuned for the next episode. Stay safe and God bless.